Precious Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, as we turn to your word, bring it alive. Let it really impact the lives of your people. None are here by mistake. All are here because you have willed it <coughs> to be so. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. First Peter chapter three, verse eight. Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Maybe we should just quit there and go home. I think that's just a great place to stop. Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. Thank you, Lord. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit the blessing. Amen. Remember, as a man sows, so shall he reap. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ear is attentive to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who's going to harm you if you're eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what's <coughs> right, you're blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. And if you like it from the King James, here it is. Do not be afraid of their terror. Neither be troubled. Don't fear what they fear. There's a very interesting lady who has put a video on Prager University that's uh, on YouTube. And the story is that she was one of the lead news commentators in Arizona. And when she would put up a story she would come to read the story on air, but the version that made it to air was different to the one she wrote. And she would ponder this because somebody was editing what she had said or what she had written. And she came to realize that the network was purposely editing out anything positive and <coughs> was specifically editing in things to make people afraid and not only fearful but deeply deeply troubled and so she quit after a broadcast one day she just said that's it I've had enough, she did it on air, by the way. And she quit there and then. Later on, as she was interviewed, she said, I can no longer be part of this machine that instills fear and terror into people. She said, they're doing this because that's what brings people back. If you're on the breast, if you will, of that news channel, you don't dare break away from it because you could miss something that's going to kill you. And so they work very hard to keep people fearful because fearful brings them back. They're afraid to break away. They're afraid to, to, to not watch today's broadcast. They have to stay in it. They have to stay with it. And it's absolutely destructive. The Bible says don't fear what they fear. 
Do not fear what they fear and don't be frightened. But in this whole passage, he keeps talking about something else as well. Not just not fearing what the world fears, and we're not going to mention COVID. But he said, if you want to have a good life and good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceit. And that person must turn from evil and do good. And then it says this, he must seek peace and pursue it. It's not enough just to seek peace, but go after it. Literally, pursue it. It's what we did, by the way, when we came to God. We were seeking peace with Him. By the way, from the garden, man was essentially at war with God. Man had rejected what God had said. And the whole story of salvation is the story of the restoration of our peace with God. Seek peace and pursue it. And don't fear what the rest of the world fears. It's crippling. Amen. You know, uh, I have watched one particular uh, doctor from Europe who's on every day. And every day, they're following the science. And it just reminds me of a car on ice. Their tires are skidding. They're not getting anywhere. They're giving it the gun and nothing's happening. The car is just sitting there and the wheels are going around and nothing is changing. Oh, well, that's not true. Things are changing. We went from Delta to Omicron to BA1, BA2, BA2.75, BA3, BA4, and here's a deep surprise for you, we now have BA5. Well, what are you gonna do, cancel life? Get on and live your life, amen. amen. And if you get it, take a handful of vitamins, put your feet up, watch TV, and relax, you're going to be fine 99% of the time. Amen. Seek peace and pursue it. And don't live in a constant state of fear. In Mark chapter 4, verse 35, we read this. That day evening came, and he said to his disciples, let's go to the other side of the lake. Leaving the crowd behind, they took uh, him along just as he was in the boat. And there were also other boats with them. And a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion and the disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Interesting, Sharon made reference to this very passage earlier. Here's the Lord in the boat, absolutely relaxed, having a rest. You know, there was one astronaut in, I think, the Gemini program that was so relaxed about being blasted off into, into the atmosphere, he fell asleep during the launch. They had to wake him up. I believe that was Lovell. And here is Jesus. He's in this, he's in this boat, and, and, and the, the winds and the waves are, are blowing, and they're, they're, they're rowing like <coughs> crazy. And they, they look at him asleep there, and they just can't take the peace that he's got. You know, the world hates it when you're peaceful. They love to get you into a tizzy. They love to draw you in. You tell me your political views, I'll tell you what channel you're watching. And we could probably divide the building right now into CNN and Fox. 
And then there'll be a few freaky people that either watch the Canadian news or perhaps the British news. But the vast majority will divide into one of those two camps. They love to keep you frightened. They love to keep you in turmoil. They, they do not want you to have peace. And here is this very situation. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care? Don't you care that, 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 that Europe right now is, is, is on fire? Don't you, don't you care about what's going on in our world? Don't you care? Wake up and panic like the rest of us. And he got up. And he rebuked the winds and the waves. Peace, be still. Shalom, be still. And the wind died down and was completely calm. And he said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? You realize God is on your side? Amen. Who can be against you? What can be against you? What can stand against you? We need to really come to an understanding here that fear and a lack of peace is not how we are meant to live. Amen. We are meant to have peace. And we find it through Jesus Christ. He is, as the Word of God says, the very Prince of Peace. Fear is not our natural state. Peacefulness, calm, rest, relaxation. James would write this. James is the half-brother of Jesus. And he would write it in James chapter 3, verse 13. You can turn there. And he would say, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, don't boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom doesn't come down from heaven, but is earthly and unspiritual and of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you'll find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes down from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Now watch this carefully. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Hey, man. You know, as believers, we should be the peacemakers. Not the warmongers. We should be the peacemakers. We should be the ones that go around that settle and cause things to be peaceful around us. And the Bible says that if in fact we sow in peace, we'll raise a harvest. Listen, the Bible has always made this kind of statement. As a man sows, so shall he reap. Sow anguish, sow fear, sow war, sow destruction. So harm, and you'll get all of that back. But so peace, so kindness, so mercy, so grace, and you will get it back in spades. Amen. Peacemakers so in pe who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Amen. You want peace in your family? Make peace in your household. Amen. You want peace in your life? Make peace with those around you. You want peace? Dole out peace. Amen. Give out what you want to get back. Amen. If you want to get back blessing, be a blessing. Amen. If you want to give out funds, give funds away. Yes. If you want to, well, whatever it is that you seek and you desire from God, give it out and it will come back to you. You are sowing a seed in life. Don't let the anxieties of the news get you. Shut the news off. 
It is 99% lies. It is stilted in one direction or the other. Very little of it is actually based in fact. I remember some years ago when we had gone to, uh, we were on the, on the way to Israel and we had stopped in Greece. And when we finally got out of Greece and we ended up in Israel, people said to us, are you okay? What do you mean are we okay? Are you, are you, are you all right? Yeah, we're fine. Well, you were in the middle of the riots. We were? Yes. It was all over the TV. There were riots everywhere. We saw it on the news. Mm, no. We didn't even know there was a problem. But the news hypes it up because that's what sells tickets. That's what brings people back. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have some understanding of what's going on in the world. Absolutely, you should. Just don't live on it. Don't make it your diet. Make peace your diet. Make joy your diet. Make the Word of God your diet. Live on that. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, it says this. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have against each other. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Boy, there would be another place to just stop, wouldn't it? And just go home and think about that. Forgive just like the Lord forgave you. And over all these virt <coughs> virtues put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. There it is. You were called by God, not, not to be God's warring champion. You were called to be peaceful. Let the peace of Christ rule your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Amen. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, uh, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and all, uh, and pardon me, and you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or do, deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. See, it's indicating that you might not let it rule in your heart. That in fact, you might tend to get in a twist. That you might tend to get freaked out and upset a lot. And he says, listen, stop it. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Yep, you're going to have issues. Yep, stuff's going to come against you. But if God is on your side, Amen. if you're living a righteous life and you're doing what's right, expect that to come back. Expect good to come your way. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Amen. It doesn't say, surely CNN will follow me all the days of my life. Surely Fox News will tell me how I should feel and what I should think and who I should hate. It says, surely goodness and mercy. Get that into your heart. If you go home remembering nothing, remember that. Goodness is looking out for you today. Amen. Mercy is coming after you. Hallelujah. It's seeking you out. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me Amen. all the days of my life. Where I go, goodness and mercy goes. Amen. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, kindness, peace, patience. These things already mentioned in the service, by the way. Just to affirm what I was to preach on. It, 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 it shows us that God wants us to come in this direction of peace and patience. Listen to this. It's found in Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I would say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to, to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. 
Now, I want to tell you something. This is really easy to read. It's not so easy to do. Boy, it's easy, easy, easy to get anxious. But he says this, don't be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with your thanksgiving, pray to God. Continue to pray to God. Petition him. And then at a certain point when you realize that you have, you've given it over to him, start thanking him for the answer. Start thanking him for the miracle. Present your request to God. And the peace of God, the shalom of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is on TV, think on these things. No. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Listen, did you know that Netflix is losing money hand over fist? Netflix. See, Netflix, they came up with a great formula. You can't control the internet. So while we can't put something on TV, because it's either got too much swearing or too much nudity or too much blood and gore, we can put it on Netflix and there's not a blooming thing anybody can do. But you know what happened? They're stunned. People are voting with their feet. People are saying, you know what? Tired of it. I'm not paying. I don't want it anymore. Maybe they'll learn, produce more content that is family friendly. People are tired of all this woke nonsense. They're tired of the crazy direction the world is going and they're tired of those that are supporting it, pouring huge money into it. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is right, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Have you ever woke yourself up started to think about things that were a problem and then all of a sudden you can't get back to sleep because once you've got one problem running through your mind that's not enough uh, you'll have two or three more coming right behind it he says listen put your mind on good stuff healthy things whatever you've learned or received from me or heard or seen from me put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Amen. He will guard your minds in Christ Jesus. It really matters what you feed your brain. Yeah. It really matters what you put in there. And by the way, never sleep with the TV on. Mm -hmm. Never sleep with the radio on. Never sleep with anything going into your mind that you don't have conscious control of. It will destroy you. Peace in the midst of the storm. And Jesus said this. He said, the counselor of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. First of all, only he can give you peace with God. Amen. Nothing else can. Not punishing yourself, not sleeping on a bed of nails, nothing. The only way to gain peace with God is to come through his son whom said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. And so only, <coughs> only he could say, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I don't give it as the world gives. The world can only give you peace with mankind. He alone can give you peace with God. And then he carries on and he makes this brilliant statement. Don't let 
your hearts be troubled. And don't be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. And don't be afraid. The Bible says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Jeremiah tells us that the man that trusts in him will be blessed. Passage after passage after passage in your Bible. Romans chapter 5 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Our peace comes through him and from him. You see, just at the right time when you were still power, or we were still powerless, Christ died for us. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man might some possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Since we now have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved through, from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only this, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now receive reconciliation. You have been reconciled with God. Let that be peace in your heart. You say, yes, but that doesn't answer my problem at home. It doesn't answer my medical problem. It doesn't answer this problem and that problem. And I understand you will always have problems, by the way. But there's a difference between having a problem and the problem having you. There's a difference between owned by your problems and having a problem that you know God can and will solve. And we need to come back to the fact that God is able. Amen. He is absolutely able. He will see you through. Trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Amen. Seek peace and pursue it. Amen. Now, some are going to think, well, that's the coward's way out. That's the weak way. You try it. And then come back and tell me if it's weak or demands all the strength you've got to control yourself. Twice this week. Did you know I have an invisible car? I have an invisible vehicle. I was on the freeway, and another vehicle, very visible one, came up on my right side and then just decided to come into my lane at what, 65, 70 miles an hour? I ended up in the ditch. I didn't go fully into the ditch, I just went off the road enough to come back again, and I'm thinking, what? Am I invisible? And then a day or so later, I'm going down Scott Road. And two gentlemen driving in a BMW, another white car. Watch out for white cars. <laughs> Decide also they cannot see me. And so from the other side this time, they just are coming over like this. I can't go anywhere else. The traffic is coming the other way. I tell you, controlling yourself and your temper is really tough to do. There are times when I would like to just shake my fist, give them an amen sign, and show them what 300 horsepower will do. And it takes a great deal to seek peace and pursue it. Amen. That's the man's way. Yes. That's the godly way. Amen. That's the way. Amen. If you want to have a happy life, seek peace and pursue it. Amen. Precious Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name.
I pray, Lord, that your people will come to understand that goodness <coughs> and mercy is following them all the days of their life. Amen. And that, Father, there is a mandate for us to seek peaceful solutions. And it's not the coward's way out. It's not the weak way out. It's not the easy way out. Because every one of us has a temper. None of us want to feel disrespected. But every one of us must control ourselves and must allow the fruit of the Spirit to flow through us. Give us the strength to be peaceful and to maintain that and to enjoy a harvest of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen.